Next question comes from House of Dao. Dear Yuta Dhammu, how much value do you put on the practice of jhana? Didn't the Buddha advocate jhana practice at least up to a point? And does it not have a use in deepening vipassana practice? All the best. Um, <clears throat> the word jhana, it's a highly debated word. Uh, not the meaning, but um, the, uh, the use of it or its place in Buddhism. Um, I think a lot of the problem comes from the fact that we misunderstand or we, we, we apply too much meaning to the word. The word jhana means meditation or, or focusing or uh, absorption. It means fixing the mind on an object. And really, in all meditation, that's what we do. This is why the Buddha said, there is no wisdom without jhana. There is no jhana without wisdom. Um, but putting these two together, then you, have, you, you come to release. You come to true understanding and, and freedom from suffering. Uh, so there, there's no need to concern or worry about, uh, you know, do we have to incorporate this, do we have to incorporate that. Um, the, the, the problem comes when we want to practice certain types of meditation that are not based on reality. And this is where a lot of the ancient texts will, will diverge. <coughs> they split meditation up into two types. One type of meditation is is a samatha meditation which focuses on jhana or a type of jhana, a type of meditation where you focus on a single object and that object is not a real object, it's something you create in your mind, you think about something so it arises in the mind, it's a construct it's not there in the first place, you think of the Buddha or you think of a color, a very simple one would be to imagine a white circle here inside your, your, your third eye, or a red or a blue circle or something. You're creating something. It's not real. And as a result, it's not going to bring wisdom and understanding about, about reality. But it will bring great states of calm. That's why that meditation is called samatha. This meditation can be useful as a precursor to vipassana. Why? Because it calms the mind down. It, it, it focuses the mind. It can also lead you to become uh, attached to it. it. It can be a hindrance towards vipassana in some cases. So you have to be careful. You use it to focus the mind. And you can also use it to gain very special and magical states of mind and, and even magical powers, so they say. But you can't use it directly to become free from suffering. To become free from suffering, you have to use a different type of jhana. It's actually called vipassana jhana. And so the use of jhana in vipassana is, uh, is correct. It means meditating in vipassana or meditating to see clearly. So um, when you start to practice vipassana, you're, you're going to focus on an object. And that is a jhana. Your, your mind is, is focused, is clearly aware of only that object. When we say to ourselves, rising, and we know that the rising. When we say falling, we know the falling. Slowly our mind gives up the hindrances. It gives up liking, disliking, drowsiness, distraction, doubt, and it's fixed and focused. So you can say it enters jhana, it enters the vipassana jhana. And this is the other type of meditation. Samatha is tranquility meditation, focusing on a concept. Vipassana, medita Vipassana meditation is meditation focused on ultimate reality, it means mundane reality, anything that arises in the present moment, whether it be in the body, our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions, and so on. So, um, a lot of the argument and, and debate out there about jhana is, I think, really superfluous. Um, we practice to understand ultimate reality, and I think that's pretty clear uh, in the Buddha's teaching. Um, that that's what we're all about. So uh, I would suggest to to stick to uh, trying to understand ultimate reality and not worry about things about terms and uh, and and concepts. Okay. So thanks for the question. Hope that helped.